for kids can be dismissed to go to their class. And we're going to get into the work. Well, I've been blessed already just being at church today. Aren't you grateful? Aren't you glad that we can assemble together? There's just nothing like it. There's nothing like, you know, thank God for that we can do. We can have the resource of online church for folks that can't come. But thank God we can. And there's still a battle. There's still a, uh, there's still a battle going on in our nation. Uh, in some states, of churches being able to get together and to assemble in person. But we're so grateful that we can do that. Amen. 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 Let's pray over the word right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who is our teacher, yes. guiding us into all the truth. And Father, I thank you as we've prayed already over this service. I thank you that you're giving to each one of us a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. Father, I thank you that the word of God will come alive in our hearts and our minds today. I thank you that you give us understanding. And Father, I pray that you would help me to communicate this word in the way that you've put it into my heart. In the name of Jesus, I trust the Holy Spirit. I rely upon him, Lord, to do that today. In the name of Jesus, Lord, thank you for what you've already done and for what you shall yet do in every heart and every life today. And we pray for those watching online and listening. Lord, we pray for them the same as well. And we pray that not one of us will leave today untouched by your power. In Jesus' name. And everyone that agreed said. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. We are going to get back into our series uh, that, we're, that I'm calling. That I've titled Under Authority. Under Authority. This is part three in the series. And I want to open up with a couple of texts here. Uh, one in, in the Gospels and one in the book of Psalms. Matthew 24 and verse 12. Matthew 24, 12 says, And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Jesus is talking about the last days. The entire 24th chapter of Matthew, Jesus is talking about things that will be unfolding and things that will be happening just before he comes back. And, and it's really interesting that, uh, that he makes this statement he says, in the last days, lawlessness will abound. And because of that, he said, the love of many will grow cold. Well, we're certainly seeing lawlessness abound yeah. in our culture, and particularly in our nation, in this time and in this season. And uh, so there's, there's lawlessness. We talked about there's, a, there's an, a, an unprecedented attack uh, on, on authority and the rule of law in our nation. And it's not coming from natural sources. Right. It's not just coming out. Now, people are being used, but, but they're being used by the devil. It's coming from yeah. demonic sources, this, this move of lawlessness. Right. In Psalm chapter 2, we find another passage that, that I think is relatable to where we're at right now. And it says this, Why do the nations rage? And the people plot a vain Have you seen rage in the streets of our nation oh, yeah. lately? Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. In other words, there's a move on that says we don't want to have anything to do with God we don't want to have anything to do with the laws of God. We don't want to have anything to do with the authority that God has established. Let's break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. Right. Now, this is not something that's just sprung up here in the last six months. This is something that's been going on, that's been an ongoing battle in our nation for a period of time, really. Oh, yeah. When we... When, 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 we see laws passed that, that redefine marriage. God, God's law, God's plan of, and purpose, of course, is marriage is one man and one, one woman, right? Amen. Yeah. 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 That's very clear in the Bible. Well, we've, we've seen a move in our nation in the last years that said, we don't want that. We reject that. We don't believe that. We think, you know, marriage can be expanded, you know, to, to include man and man, woman and woman. And, and, and you know, when you start crossing the line in that, then it's, then it's not long before you even see what, what's come up in the last, was very alarming, what's come up in the last few months is, oh, well, pedophilia is not so bad. 
You know, who, who would have thought that we would ever see a move to normalize that? Well, I'll tell you, I thought about it when we when we crossed the line, when we when we when we rejected yeah. God God's law and God's standard on that. Oh, yeah. It's just a matter of time right. until yeah. it moves in that direction. Oh, yeah. That's why we have to take a stand right now in prayer, yes. using yes. our spiritual authority yes. and also voting our values. Amen. 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 All right. And so, and so this is a this scripture is talking about, and, and this is a recurring theme. What he talks about in Psalms here: the nation, nations raging, and, and the kings of the earth saying, taking counsel against the Lord and against His anointed, and saying, "We're going to break their bonds in pieces. We're going to cast away their cords from us." We see it recurring, and we even see it at the end of the age when Jesus comes back to set up His kingdom. The Bible says that the kings of the of the earth gather together with the Antichrist to make war with the Lord Jesus. Right. That's a futile attempt, of course, right. but they're going to do it. All right. And so again, we're we're seeing we're witnessing an unprecedented attack against authority and the rule of law yes. uh, in our nation, particularly. And I want to point out something that, that took place this last week that you may have seen in the news, and that's the Breonna Taylor case. Uh, Breonna Taylor was a young, a young black woman that was killed last March uh, in Louisville, Kentucky, and what happened was plainclothes police officers executed a warrant at her apartment. They were seeking to arrest her boyfriend who was suspected of being a drug dealer. Now, the, the news media has made it sound like that the police were totally out of line, that they came in and shot these totally innocent people that were just uh, at, at home and in their bed sleeping. Okay, but that's not what happened. It was, uh, people said, well, this was a no-knock warrant. They just busted down the door and came in. It was not a no-knock warrant. You may have heard that in the news, but it was not. The officers knocked. They identified themselves. They said, this is the police. And, uh, and then they entered the apartment, when they entered the apartment, they were immediately met with gunfire. Uh, Breonna Taylor's boyfriend had a gun and immediately began shooting at the police the moment that they entered in. Of course, they returned fire, and tragically, Breonna was hit and was killed. That's, that's a tragedy uh, that, that's, that, that should not have happened. And, uh, and so... Uh, what, what, what has happened here is that, that the grand jury, this past week, the grand jury had met and they made their announcement this past week and they determined that the police officers were not guilty of murder. They were not guilty in her death. They were, they were justified in returning fire uh, because they were being fired upon. And, uh, and, and so uh, the grand jury uh, verdict came back that the officers were not guilty. One, one was charged. He'd already been dismissed from the police force, and he'd already been charged with reckless discharge of his weapon. Uh, and, but that was the only charge that was made. Uh, by the way, the family has already received, the family of Breonna Taylor has already received a $12 million uh, settlement from the city of Louisville uh, in, a, in, a, in a wrongful death. They filed a wrongful death lawsuit uh, a few months ago, and the, and the city settled with them for $12 million. Now that doesn't bring Breonna Taylor back and it's tragic that she lost her life. But yet there was rioting at the, 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 the moment that that uh, verdict was announced on a Wednesday afternoon, there was rioting and violence in Louisville and not only in Louisville, but across the nation. In other cities of the nation, people were rioting saying, oh, this is, this is wrong and we're gonna riot and we're gonna, you know, we're gonna protest and riot until these men are convicted. Well. The, the grand jury looked at the evidence. The, 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 our, our, our legal system, our judicial system was at work and looked at the evidence and looked at it. Have they done it right every time? No. Uh, has, have, there been, have there been problems? Certainly. But it, it, it appears in this case that they were right in, uh, in what they determined. And yet there are some people that say we're not going to accept that. And we're going to riot, and we're going to burn, and we're going to destroy uh, until we get our way. Well, that's not how our nation is set up. Our nation is set up. If we, if we go down that road, then there, you know, uh, the whole nation is going to be destroyed. Right. We have to be a nation governed by the rule of law. Right. We cannot be a nation governed by mob violence. No, right. 
You know, I thought about I thought about the uh, situation in Rwanda uh, less than 20 years ago, 1994, the genocide in Rwanda. Basically, rather than allowing a legal system and a justice system to play out, the two two rival or two two of the, the native groups, the Hutus and the Tutsis, began a war against each other. And one of those groups, there were 800,000 of them killed in 100 days. Yeah. Wow. A genocide. Just because they resorted to mob violence instead of having the rule of law. And so, we've got to have, we've got to have the rule of law. Amen. Uh, people were calling, in fact, influential people in the media. Uh, after the announcement was made on Wednesday, they said, we're going to burn the system down. Really? And replace it with what? Right. Replace it with what? Right. Have there been have there been instances of excessive use by law enforcement? Certainly there have. Is it widespread and prevalent? The facts just don't bear that out. Have there been instances for individuals being targeted by law enforcement because of their race? Unfortunately, yes, that there have we have had incidences of that in our country. Is it widespread and prevalent? The facts just don't bear that out. And yet the media seems to want to throw gasoline on the fire rather than report the facts. And, uh, and so that's one of our problems right there. Yeah. But bottom line, what I'm saying is there's a spirit of lawlessness that is at work in our nation. Right. And we have, to, we have to get back yeah. to the rule of law yeah. in our nation. Amen. 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 Authority is under attack in our nation. Right. Right. Now... Uh, the Antichrist, we know, we know that the Antichrist, he's known as the man of lawlessness. In fact, let me read you a couple of verses here from 2 Thessalonians. We pointed these out uh, previously in our series. For the mystery, 2 Corinthians 2, verse 7, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. That's the church. Yes. And it's our job, it's our responsibility as the church to restrain this spirit of lawlessness that is at work in our nation. Amen. And we're to do that spiritually. Amen. The spirit of lawlessness is the spirit of the Antichrist. Amen. And the Antichrist cannot fully come to power until the church is out of the way. Right. He's trying to, and he's trying, that spirit is trying to manifest itself in lawlessness across our nation. So that's why we should use our spiritual authority, yeah. take authority over the devil. And all of the demonic forces that are trying to divide and tear apart our nation, it's a spirit of lawlessness, right. but we've got authority over Amen. that if we'll use it and exercise it. Amen. 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 So when the church is gone, verse 8 says, Then the lawless one, notice the Antichrist is called the lawless one. Then the lawless one will be revealed, and the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The Message Bible says it this way. Uh, verse 7, that doesn't mean that the spirit of anarchy is not, is not now at work. It is, secretly and underground. We see the spirit of anarchy at work, don't we? Yeah. We Amen. see Antifa, that are, they're anarchists, and they're stirring up. They've been riding in Portland every night for a hundred days. Now. It says, but the time will come, verse 8, but the time will come when the anarchists, uh, the the the, the the man that wrote the message Bible uses the term anarchist for the Antichrist. But the time will come when the anarchist will, will no longer be held back, but will be let loose. But don't worry, the Master Jesus will be right on his heels and blow him away. The Master appears and puff. The anarchist is out of there. I like the, I like the message Bible, don't you? Let me, let me give you the definition of the word anarchy, because that's what we're seeing, and that's what people are that's what, the, what, what people are trying to accomplish in this nation is to create anarchy. Anarchy is a state of lawlessness or political disorder due to the absence of governmental authority. If we don't have proper governmental authority in our country or in any country, what will result will be anarchy, right. a state of lawlessness and political disorder. Now, there are people that stand to profit from that. There are people in, in, in high places and powerful positions oh, yeah. that want this. Yeah. They want anarchy. They want division. They want people fighting one another because they're going to profit from it. Oh, yeah. Politically and economically. Oh, yeah. 
And so they're the ones behind the scenes working on this. Uh, another definition of anarchy is this. A utopian society of individuals who enjoy complete freedom without government. Well, they tried that in Seattle for a few weeks, remember? Oh, yeah. Remember they called it Chaz? The Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone. They took over a six-block area in downtown Seattle. And they said, we don't need any police. The problem was there were rapes, there were murders, there were, there were beatings. It happened in every night. And so finally, thank God, the, 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 the government officials finally came in and said, we're going to, we've got to put a stop to this. And the, and the, and the Chaz zone, or the CHOP zone, came to nothing. And uh, it, 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 it's, it's folly to think that, that we can live without authority. Right. Amen. 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 Somebody said, Pastor, people just need Jesus. Well, I agree. We do just need Jesus. But until Jesus gets a hold of some of them, I want the police there to protect me from them. How about you? Isn't that right? right. Amen. Yes, we want. We know that the only real change that can take place, you can't legislate it. It's got to be through the gospel, and that's our mission. That's our job to share the gospel with people. But I want the police there. I want the law enforcement there so Jesus can get a hold of some of these folks. Amen. And change them. Amen. Amen. Are you out there? Yeah. All right. Romans 5 talks about that. We've looked at this. This is kind of review since we went a different way last week. But uh, Romans 5 talks about that. Let's look at it again. He says, Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities. For there's no authority except from God. And the authorities that exist are appointed by God. God established authority, folks. Right. Yeah. Amen. 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 Therefore, and he's talking specifically about civil authority here, okay? Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good. And you'll have praise from the same. For he is God's minister to you for good. He's talking about civil authority. He's talking about law enforcement. He's talking about government officials. It says they are God's ministers to us for good. Amen. Yes. Amen. Right. Come on. Right. Don't put on your hands. Yes. We're with you. you were clapping for me a while ago. We're with you. Therefore... <laughs> Therefore, whoever resists the authority of our rhythm, he's God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid. For he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is God's minister and avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Right, amen. 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 Yes, I want Jesus to change people's hearts, but there's some, some folks out there that he won't that they haven't let Jesus change their heart yet. They're practicing evil, right. and we need law That's enforcement right. to execute yes. wrath. Right. That's right. Amen. 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 To keep us safe. Yes. To have an orderly society. Yes. That's God's plan. Amen. Yes. Therefore, you must be subject, not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. Yes. All right. Yes. So, uh, you know, there is evil in the world. Amen. Because of that, then, then civil authority is necessary. Yeah. Yeah. Secularism assumes everybody's basically good. So we don't need civil authority. Scripture teaches otherwise. Scripture teaches that what? Man's sinful. Right. Yeah. All have sinned and come short of the glory of yeah. God. Yeah. Amen. We need a Savior to save us from our sin. And we need the police <laughs> to yeah. curb the evil. Right. Yeah. Amen. We need both. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. So, no, I'm not in favor of defunding the police, and God's not either. Right. Amen? Amen. But let's look at, let's look at, uh, again, reviewing. And I know we're almost out of time here. Uh, but uh, we'll get into, we'll, we'll just take a few more minutes here. But the levels of authority. Number one, the number one, the highest level of authority is what? Does anybody remember? God, yeah. God and His Word. Right? No, yeah. I'm glad you were right there. Take it off a week. Really, really hurts. This day. <laughs> God and His Word. I, I might not have remembered either if I hadn't been studying this. So don't feel bad. So God and His Word are the highest authority. In fact, they're inseparable. You can't separate God from His Word. Amen. 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 Yes. 
When we talk about the authority of God, how do we know that? We know it from the Word of God. So God and His Word are one, and that is our highest authority, that is our final authority. Yes. The Word of God should be the final authority in your life, in my Amen. life. Amen? Amen. Yeah. The Word says it, and that settles it. Amen? Yes. That should be our final authority. Amen. Praise God. So that's the highest level of authority. But under that is what we call delegated authority. God has delegated authority in different areas. And uh, the, it says the authorities, the scripture in Romans that we read said the authorities that exist are appointed by God. That means that God has delegated authority in these areas. All right? Yes. And, the, uh, and some of these areas include civil authority, which is law enforcement, the government, and military Military is a good example of, of, of understanding authority. If you were in the military, then you have a good understanding of authority, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Right. And I got, I'm getting a loud amen from some that I know have been in the military. That's true. <laughs> the centurion in Matthew chapter 8, he cited for having great faith because he understood authority. Yes. Matthew 8 verse 9, Jesus said, for I, or, for the, or the centurion talking to Jesus said, For I also am a man under authority. He's a Roman centurion. He's a commander over a hundred troops. I also am a man under authority. So he was under authority. There was a there was a higher commander over him over him. I'm a man under authority, having soldiers under me. He said, I'm I'm, I'm under authority and I have soldiers under me. I say to this one, go and he goes to another come and he comes to another and to my servant do this and he does it. Jesus said he had great faith. Jesus yeah. commended him for great faith, because he understood authority. He was in the military. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Right. And then we have the authority of family and home. That would be parents. That would be the husband and wife relationship. We're going to talk about that in a moment. And then there's authority uh, at work, your employer, your supervisor, employer, employee relationships. And then there's authority in the church, leadership in the church. God has delegated authority in all of these areas, in all these places. Yes. And the Bible speaks to all these various levels of authority, and it gives us directives as to how we're to respond and relate to authority. And so I don't know how long this series is going to last, but we're going to try to look at all of these areas, because we need to understand it. We need to understand authority, yeah. because that's where your blessing is going to come from. Yeah. Yeah. Remember the scripture read in Proverbs 14, it said, a good man will be satisfied from above himself. Yeah. Amen. A good man will be satisfied from above himself. That means if you're under authority, then you're going, your blessing is going to come to you by you being submitted to authority. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen? Praise God. All right. So let's look at, at this. And so we're to, we're to submit to delegated authorities, remember, unless they order us to do something that God commands us not to do. Or, unless they order us not to do something that God commands us to do. And we looked at that last, the last session. We talked about when a delegated authority requires us or commands us to do something that's contrary to the highest authority, which is God and His Word. Then, of course, we have to go with that higher authority, right? Amen. 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 All right. So let's look at the home. Uh, we know that God ordained the family. Yeah. Amen. 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 He ordained marriage. Yes. Right? Amen. One man and one woman. And we see that at the very beginning. Before the church, before the government, before any other institution, the first institution that God established was marriage. Yeah. Amen. And then as a result of marriage, then family. Yes. But let's talk about marriage for a moment. Marriage should be a place of unconditional love between husband and wife. Amen. 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 That's what it should be. You know, the Bible says, talking about Adam and Eve in the garden, before they sinned, the Bible says they were naked and they were not ashamed. Now, that's not just talking about physically there, but it's talking about emotionally. Because marriage should be a place where the husband and the wife can be totally vulnerable, totally unguarded with each other emotionally and know that they are accepted and loved unconditionally. Yeah, amen. 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 That's what that means. And that's what that's what marriage should be. It should be a sacred place of unconditional love between husband and wife. Amen. But God also established a structure of authority in the home. 
It should be a place of love, first of all, but it should also be a place where the authority structure is recognized and is followed. Amen. Amen. So let's look at what the Bible says about that. It has a lot to say about it. Ephesians 5, verse 22. And, I, and I'm reading from God's Word translation. I like the way that it's worded because it brings out the, the essence of what submission to authority really is. It says, the King James, the New King James says, Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands. But I like the way God's Word reads. It says, Wives, place yourselves under your husband's authority. So what, is that, what does that communicate to us? That means it's a willingness. That means that as an act of your will, you are saying, I'm coming under, wives, I'm coming under the authority of my husband. Right. That's an act of your will. It's not where a husband says, woman, you submit to me. You can't make anybody submit. Amen. You might make them obey you. You might, make, you might coerce them to do what you're demanding. But, you, but submission is an attitude of the heart. Right. Yes. Yes. That's where it starts. And that's why he's saying, wives, place yourselves under your husband's authority as you place yourselves under the Lord's authority. Jesus didn't come to you and say, obey me. Amen. He invites us yes. to make him Lord of our life. Yes. Yes. Isn't that right? Yes. It's something that we do willingly. Yes. It's something that we choose. Well, in the same way, wives are to are to place themselves <laughs> under their husband's authority. Yes. So we see that God has established this authority structure in the home. And of course, you know, people today, you, you, you talk about that with some people today, oh my gosh, you're, you're one of those, you believe in that, you know, that sexist, misogynistic teaching. It's not sexist, it's not misogynistic, it's scriptural, it's biblical, and it's and it's, the purpose of it is to bless us. Amen. To fulfill. Amen. 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 Verse 23, the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church. It is his body, and he is its Savior. As the church is under Christ's authority, so wives are under their husband's authority in everything. All right? Yeah. Now, again, uh, submission, it's an attitude of the heart. It must be done willingly. And just like a, just like a woman chooses to follow Jesus and to submit to his authority, so in marriage she chooses to place herself under her husband's authority, right. as we said. Now, here's where we run into problems, though. How many of you know the Lord is perfect, yeah. 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 but no husband is? Yes. <laughs> well, I'm going to lay too well with you. The Lord's perfect, but there's no husband that is. Have there been husbands that have abused their authority? Yeah. Certainly. Yeah. Just like there have been police officers right. that have abused their authority. But the solution is not to defund the police, and the solution is not to reject God's structure of authority in marriage. Right. Amen. Come on, this right. is good preaching. Amen. 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 All right. You know, like Charles Barkley said. Anybody hear Charles Barkley this week? He said, he said these people, he said, these, these idiots that are running around. Anybody know who Charles Barkley is? Yeah. Former NBA player. He's a commentator now on, on, on TNT's <laughs> broadcast of the NBA. And he says... Uh, he said, these people that are running around calling for the police to be defunded, he said, uh, he, said who are, he said, who are people in minority communities? What are they expecting to do? Who are they going to call? Ghostbusters? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love Charles. Uh, so rejecting God appointed authority in the home is also a bad idea. Oh, yeah. Amen. 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 All right. So now, so let's, let's keep reading here. And we get into the next verse after, after, after Paul writes and says, Wives, place yourselves under your husband's authority. Then he turns around and talks to the husband. He says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might present her to himself a glory, that he might sanctify her and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle, or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. Amen. See, so the responsibility is not only on the wife, but on the husband as right. well. Yes. And remember, the only way to, to effectively exercise authority is to be under authority. That's right. Yes. Isn't that right? Yes. So for a husband to properly exercise authority in the home, he has to be under the authority of 
of the Lord yes. to properly exercise His authority. Amen? Yes. The Message Bible makes it even clearer. Husbands, go all out <laughs> in your love for your wives. And all the wives said. Yes. Amen. Exactly as Christ did for the church. See, that, see, it's easy to submit to love. It's easy for us to submit to the Lord Jesus. Why? Yes. Because He loved us and He gave Himself for us. Yes. Amen. A love marked by giving, Amen. not getting. Amen. Christ's love makes the church whole. Amen. His words evoke her beauty. Amen. Everything he does and says is designed to bring out the best in her. Amen. Amen. Think about that. That's how Jesus loves us. And Paul has said that's how husbands are to love their wives. Husbands, your words are to evoke her beauty. Everything that you do and say, husbands, is, to, is designed to bring out the best of her. That's a, that's a big responsibility, isn't it? But if we'll do that, if husbands will do that, then that makes, that makes the wife's role to, of, 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 of placing herself under your authority, that makes it a lot easier. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. See, the husband is to love his wife and to lead his family. And most, I, I believe most women are looking for that. Yeah, yes. I believe most yeah. women are looking for their husband to take the lead, yes. to be a godly man, to be a strong leader. Yeah. Most yeah. women don't want to have to t step up and, and run the family because the husband has, has abdicated his responsibility. Right. Amen. 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 Praise God. All right. Now, all right, let's go, let's go a little further here. Buckle your seatbelt. <laughs> First Peter 3, verse 6. Look at this one. We're almost done. In fact, guys, y'all can come on back up. Maybe play something nice to get me out of this here. <laughs> All right, look at this now. Okay, so, so Peter is talking about the same thing. Peter just has said, Peter just has said, talk, told the wives to submit to their husbands. Peter actually goes through every scenario. Civil authority, uh, employer, employee relationship. And, and, and here he's talking about marriage and family. And, and talks about wives submitting to their husbands. As Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. And all the husbands said. <laughs> you, were really, you, you said it, but you were kind of afraid to say it. All right. <laughs> all right. Now. Husbands, I, I, I'm not expect, you know, I don't think I don't think you should expect your wives to call you Lord. <laughs> do any of you do that? Any of you, any of you wives, you call your husband Lord? No, no. I don't think so. All right. Why not? The Bible says you're supposed to. <laughs> there it is. Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. <laughs> And he said, that's a good thing. You know, things might change for the good in your home, ladies, if you start calling your husband Lord. <laughs> Will you want me to help you out? <laughs> Can I help you out a little bit here? I told you about your seatbelt. All right. God's Word translation, we don't, we don't have it on the screen, but God's Word translation says, Sarah obeyed Abraham and spoke to him respectfully. That softens it just a little bit, right? Yes, yes. You don't have to call your husband Lord, but it really would help if you spoke to him respectfully. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Ephesians 5, 33, it won't be on the screen either, but in that same passage we were just reading, if you get down to verse 33, it says, Let the wife see to it that she respects her husband. Amen. 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 Now, look at what it says here back in we'll put 1 Peter 3, 6 there, Ken, if you're not too angry with me for pointing these things out today. Lord Michael! Okay. All right. As Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, speaking to him respectfully, whose daughters you are, if you do good, and look at this now, and are not afraid with any terror. You know, I think here's the issue. What, what makes it hard sometimes for wives to submit to their husbands or place themselves under their husband's authority is fear. Yeah. Right. They're afraid he's going to drive the family bus off the cliff. Right. <laughs> Amen. 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 They're afraid he's right. leading the family in the wrong direction. Amen. Well, yes. well, he's human. Yeah. And he's going to make mistakes. Right. 
I have a, I have a thought. Pray for him. Amen. 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 Pray for him. Yes. Pray that God would give him wisdom. Yes. Pray that God would help him yes. to lead the family. Yes. Amen. 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 So God ordained Kim to go just a little bit farther here. Y'all all right? Yeah. Amen. I know it's getting late, but you're still with me, right? Yeah. Yeah. Still good. You're still a little far. I didn't get the whole pit full light today. <laughs> yeah. All right. I don't mind looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hallelujah. Is that amplified by the way? All right. <laughs> so God ordained by this union of man and woman that children would be born. And in this home, in this family, children should learn, should grow up learning that they're loved and that they're valued, right? Amen. Amen. Yes. And parents should teach their children about God and about His love for them Amen. and about Jesus, their Savior. But then also children should learn about authority in the home. Amen. Somebody said that all these people... Oh, uh, all of these, all of these anarchists, and all these people are out riding because they never learned authority in the home. That's right. That may be the case. A lot of them are a bunch of spoiled, rich white kids oh, yeah. that are yeah. instigating yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so that may be the case. But children should also, also learn about authority in the home. Scripture talks about that. Ephesians six: Children obey your parents and the Lord. So, so the husband and the wife. The mother and the father, they are joint exercisers of authority over the children. They're to be a team. Amen. 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 They are to be one. The two are to be one. And the exercise of authority in the home as far as the children are yes. concerned. Yes. Yes. You ever had your kids come and ask you something that they wanted to do and you didn't give them the right answer? <coughs> and so they went and asked the other parent? Well, that's why, that's why you need to be together. Amen. 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 All right. So children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. Amen. Well, that's a blessing of authority right there. Amen. If, we will, if children will obey authority in the home, God's promise God's promise is that it may be well with you and you'll live long oh, yeah. on the earth. Amen. 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 Yeah. I do have to include the grandparent exemption. <laughs> <laughs> Grandparents are exempt from having to tell their grandkids, no, you can't have it. You do understand. All right. I, a while back, I, I brought Elliot home I've been keeping him, and I brought him home, and I told Will, my son Will, what, what uh, we'd done and what I'd given him and all of that. He said, well, Dad, he said, you know, you can tell him nothing. <laughs> I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> and actually, I have told him no. Actually, it's more like redirecting his attention. Yeah. <laughs> you have to be clever, and you have to be artful in that. So That's right. Rather than just outright saying no, I, let, let's go do this over here, Elliot. Watch, watch Cars 1. Uh, no, let's not watch a video right now. Let's go, let's go read a book. <laughs> he loves watching the movie Cars. And he knows there's a Cars 1, a Cars 2, and a Cars 3. So he, so he, so he clarified, what, watch Cars 1. <laughs> All right. So children are to obey their parents. Even Jesus did this. We pointed out a couple weeks ago. Luke 2, 51. This is after Jesus had been to the, had been to celebrate the Passover and they were coming back from the feast and they lost track of Jesus and, and went back and found he was, he was back in Jerusalem. And, uh, and so they go back and they find him and they said, son, it's time he's 12 years old. And it says, then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and what? Subject. And was subject to them. Think about that. The Son of God, the one who, who created... <laughs> Added, or who created Joseph and Mary and all of us submitted to their authority right. because he had taken upon himself flesh, he had become human, and he submitted to the authority of his earthly parents, even though they were fallible, even though they were not perfect, and he was 
He still submitted to their authority. Why? Because he's honoring his heavenly father. He's honoring God because God had instituted that authority in the home. You may be smarter, no more, more well qualified than your supervisor at work or some law enforcement official or some government official. But if they're in that position of authority and they're not doing, they may do something that aggravates you, but if they're not doing anything that, that, that blatantly violates the word of God, then we're to submit to their authority. That's how it works. Amen? Yes. That's what you learn in the military. You've got, you know, officers over you that are, uh, obviously, that, that, that you think, you know, you, you, your thoughts run through your head. I can do their job. They're, they're doing a, a terrible job leading this and, and doing this. But you submit to their authority or you're out of there. Right. Yes. Right. Right. All right. So the other side of that, Ephesians 6, verse 4, he says, And you fathers... Do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. So in other words, fathers are not to be heavy-handed and exercising authority. Some of you have to deal with that. Some of you growing up, you had to deal with a father that, that, didn't, that didn't know God, that didn't, didn't love himself, and was heavy-handed, even abusive. And, uh, and I, know that, I, know, I know from talking to some of you that you had to deal with that. But... Uh, you know, God still ordains the office and the position, all right? right. And, the, and, the, and the responsibility of a father is not to be heavy-handed in exercising that authority, but bringing up their children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Yeah. So authority on every level is under attack. Oh, yeah. Civil authority is under attack. Authority in the home is under attack. It has been. Authority in the home has been under attack for a long, long time. The devil knows if he can break down the, the home and the family, then he can break down the whole society. Right. Yeah. And in some cases, he's done a pretty good job. That's why we have to re-embrace what God has said. Yes. We'll re-embrace God's plan and God's purpose, and we can do that. We can change We change the world by changing our own self first, yes. right? Yes. We change the world by changing our own home first. Right. Yes. Right. Amen? Right. So let's do that. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Let me pray. I want to pray for our online family. For those of you that are watching this online, maybe you've logged on here and you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart to be your Lord and Savior. This is where it starts. This is where you, this is where you find life. This is where you find love. This is where you find freedom and peace by giving your heart to Jesus. I'm going to lead you in a prayer right now. And, and you'll receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you'll come into the wonderful family of God. Just pray this prayer after me. Dear God, and you and the congregation can pray it after me as well. Let's join us. Dear God, Dear God I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe that Jesus died for me. And he was raised from the dead. He is alive today. He is the Son of God. And he is the one. The only one. Who can give me eternal life. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I repent of my sins. I repent of my rebellion. I repent of my rebellion. And I willingly, and I willingly place myself, place myself under your authority. Under your authority. I say, I say, Jesus, Jesus is my Lord. Is my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for giving me life. Thank you for giving me life. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. I want to pray for all of you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my brothers and sisters. And I thank you, Father, and I praise you that you would help each one of us to walk out this message that we've heard. And, in the, in the, Lord, in the way that you've spoken it to our hearts, in our particular situation, I trust you to do that. I thank you for doing that. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Praise God. God bless you. Uh, all right. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get this off right here. My, my audio video guy is doing something else evidently. So let me do this right quick.